Uh, so it's my pleasure to bring to the microphone to say hello and a few words a councilman who I've been working very closely with over the years, who is a big advocate of the library, but more importantly, a big advocate of the borough of Queens and all the diversity that we have here. And that's Councilman Barry Grajachin. I always say Barry's name wrong, and I'm going to be doing that throughout the day, so I apologize beforehand. Councilman? Thank you, Dennis. Good to see everybody. Um, I stopped by this morning. Just as Dennis said, a lot of us were at uh, District Attorney's Legislative Breakfast this morning, and we were talking about immigrants' rights and human trafficking and uh, what he's been doing to work to help uh, the immigrant community. I'm here today, as Dennis said, because I am a supporter of the library, uh, but more important than the library are the people that use it. Uh, to me and to my mind, uh, the library uh, here in Queens and across our great nation is one of the most important tools that we have to protect and defend our democracy. I look around, I see Haitian Americans United for Progress, I see the NYCLU, I see the mayor's office, and I can't see some of the other, maybe if it's the Queens Chamber of Commerce, I don't know who's back there. But it's important, especially now, last Saturday night I had the honor with my, my counsel and dear friend Steve Bihar, we were rallying for the rights of immigrants and refugees at John F. Kennedy Airport just a few miles from here. Queens is, as we know, the most diverse place on earth. And if anybody doesn't believe me, just take a look around this room. Um, we could be... We could be any place on earth right now because I think we have a representative just about every corner of the earth right here in this room. It is important that we stand up, not only for ourselves, but for each other. Very, very important that we stand up for ourselves and more importantly, for each other. There are people that want to change the way that this country does business. I don't need to name their names. We all know who they are. We are not going to change the welcoming nature of this county or any other part of the United States of America. As we speak, people are landing at JFK Airport to start a new life here in Queens and in other parts of New York City. And I know I stand with all of my colleagues in the City Council that we will work very, very hard to protect and defend and promote the rights of all the people, whether their families have been living here for 350 years or 350 minutes. I want to thank Dennis, and I work very closely with him and his staff, and the great job that the library is doing to protect and defend our democracy. Now is the time that we need to stand, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. Now is the time that we need to be constructive and thoughtful and peaceful. But we need to stand up for ourselves and each other, and that is the message I am going to continue to carry forward from this day and every day with my colleagues and the council and the other elected officials in this county, from our borough president on down and of course our mayor and our governor. Um, and I look forward to working with all of you uh, to defend our democracy. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Councilman. I want to pick up on a point that the Councilman made because I want you to take a look around the room. And we represent Queens, we represent New York City, we represent the United States, we represent the world. And that's who we are here for, the people of the diversity of this great borough and this great country, and the people who walk through that door every day, who come into our library for information, for sanctuary, for peace of mind, for books, for information on a regular basis to make their lives better. And what better place than to hold this than a library that's free, that's open to all, that's for the entire world, that truly represents the diversity of our great world. And we're not here for the politics, we're here for the people. The people of this great borough to make sure we advocate on their behalf and then give them the information they need to be a full part of our great American dream, the American society. My grandparents came here in the early 1900s. All of us have a similar story, and we're here to fight for the new immigrants who come in, those who've been here for a while, to provide services, and to make sure that we, the library, 
along with our brother and sister libraries in New York and Brooklyn as well, are here to give information on a regular basis. Now, we have representatives here from uh, the borough president's office. Uh, we have representatives here from the speaker's office. And we have representatives from many of our partner organizations here today as well. We will have a great person who is a library employee who is a Yemeni immigrant and a person who is powerful in her own right. And we're just so, so uh, proud of her because she spoke at our staff retreat. And with Naget Nancy Amatari, uh, she is someone who just works hard on behalf of the residents. And I'd like to call her to the microphone to say a couple of words. Thank you, Nancy. sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Queen's Library. Today, I just want to give you a little information and background about me where I was seven years ago in 2010. January of 2010, I came to the United States of America as an immigrant, seeking for help, seeking for advice. And as a female Yemeni Muslim, I wasn't allowed to succeed, to have an education, to be where I am today. I walked in the Queen's Library with open doors wonderful staff, materials, items, books, computers, you name it, they have it in the Queen's Library. I started as an ESOL student, worked my way up, and I am the first graduate in the Queen's Library to graduate and to have my high school diploma. But Queen's Library wasted no time guiding me step by step, teaching me. I also volunteered for a few months at the Queen's Library. It was an amazing experience to excel for the future. I, got a, I received a part-time position as a teacher assistant within the Queen's Library system. Six months later, I got promoted to a program assistant in the Rochdale Community Library. Today, I'm on my third promotion. I am a full-time staff member at the Langston Hughes Community Library and Cultural Center. I am a customer service specialist. I feel empowered. I feel proud to represent the Yemeni women out there that suffered, cannot receive education, Advice for all the views that really want your education, please come to the Queen's Library. You will, you'll see huge success. As I look at this room, across the room, it really puts tears in my eyes to see how amazing we're in the Queen's Library, diversity people, all different kind of cultures and backgrounds. That puts tears in my eyes. As I told you, powerful. I mean, this is what we're talking about. This is why we're here. These are individuals we're here to work on behalf of, to serve, to give information to. That's why we're a library. That's why we're people who are here to give service to all the people. Everyone is welcome. Our doors are always open. Our doors are here for these individuals who are looking for that next step in life. And I thought you were about to say that you're soon to be the next CEO of the library yeah, as well. So I, I was waiting for that to come out next as well. So you know, it's in time, in time. Give me, give me a couple of years, and then we'll talk from there. All right. You got, especially since you have board members here too. So I got, I got to watch my back. And so next we have a person who uh, has been just a person involved with us in a different way, and that's. Jagdish Shati, an immigrant from India. Hello, my name is Jagdish. English is really bad. But I'm coming, this is second classes in the Queen's uh, Library. But what you say, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm thinking that going to the only two classes. I'm coming 2006 in the America. But uh, I'm joined only two weeks before in the Queen's classes. I'm thinking, call here, okay, going to the Queen's Library is something 
some this is. I'm see the people. I'm really. I don't understand what he say. Okay, I'm coming next time. I'm speaking more than better. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're better than I am, so don't worry about that. I mean, you're a lot. Now I got to share this story with you. So for those who don't know, and I talk about it all the time, my desk is right over there. I don't have an office, so my desk is right there on the floor. And so yesterday, I was sitting at my desk, and out of the background, in the background, I heard this little child just talking away, talking away, talking away. And I turned around, and the child uh, was probably around two years old, and this child was just running his mouth, just talking, 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 talking. It just sounded great. So I got up and I went over to the two chairs where the child was sitting next to a man, an older man, and they were going back and forth. So I asked the man, I said, well, how old is the child? And the man looked at me and didn't understand what I was saying. And I said, well, how old is the child? And he didn't understand because he was here to register for a class and to take a class of English as a second language. And that's what we do here. I mean, that's what you see around this library, the over 60 libraries that represent Queens, and the libraries of the New York Public Library System and the Brooklyn Public Library System and libraries across the country. People walking in our doors looking for that next step. We will have Mashat Tomore, an immigrant from Bangladesh. Mashat. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Trust Denise, for having me here. Um, I'm Masha. I'm a very recent immigrant from Bangladesh. Um, I'm here today because uh, the first institution, the first place I walked into after coming to New York was this library. I, I got to know about this from Selena, a friend of my family, and um, I was mesmerized because when I came in here, I didn't know who to go to for a license. I didn't know how to sign up for a job. I didn't know how to sign up for a class. And I got that here. Um, in Bangladesh, we have a saying, a book is your best friend. And I can't imagine what a library, this library has been to me if one book has been my best friend. This library has been a um, safe haven for me. From where I applied for a job, I took my high school equivalents from here. I got, I applied for colleges from here. So did my brother, and I've used the computers here. And this has been a. Uh, today, when I was asked to be here to speak, it, I was honored. I was mesmerized. I, I'm so happy to be here, and this library has been uh, the platform that has represented me to New York and New York to me. This has been the introductory grant for me. And, um, and the best part of this library is the Bengali book section. It never, it never tore me away from home, really, because I'm one of those persons who loves reading, and this has been a, a great experience. It was unexpected, and it was perfect for me. Um, thank you. That's all for today. I want to pick up on something that she said because she said a safe haven and I want to reinforce that term because with all the rhetoric that's going on right now and with all the type of stories that are emanating out from DC and other places we want to make sure that we reinforce the message that we are that safe haven we don't want people to go underground we don't want people to be afraid we want people to know their rights, what they're entitled to, and making sure they get the services they deserve. And that's why we're here today, to reinforce that message that you, you, all the people are here, and all the people who are not here are welcome, feel safe to get that information. And our goal is to make sure that you're empowered and we're empowered to continue our job to provide that opportunity for all, whether it's learning English, whether it's getting a job, whether it's getting a high school degree, to come through our doors because we have the best librarians in the world and the best staff to provide that information around citizenship and everything that all folks, all people who are here to be part of the American dream and that's what the library is about. Next, 
we will have a person from El Salvador, and that's Jessica Santos. Is Jessica here? Yeah. There you are. Hi, Jessica. How are you? I've been here for 12 years. <laughs> okay. I am here for speak how the Queen's Library helped me. I am the ESL crush right now, and I learned that sometimes we don't know the, how the Queen's Library has many services, and we don't know, we don't come in, we don't ask for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And for the person who has to speak louder, uh, I think what you saw was somebody who was very brave to come before the microphone to share her story. And obviously we want all people to hear, but to me, it is a bold step, especially in this climate that we're in to step before a microphone and articulate your views and why you are here to talk about how we and all of us together making sure that all of us are part of the same dream and sharing those points. Next, we have someone who is an immigrant from China mm -hmm. and a person who is not shy as far as what I gather, <laughs> sharing her thoughts and that's it. Ivy Van. How do you know it? I'm not be shy. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's too high. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Yeah, my name is Ivy, and I am an immigrant from China. I came to the United States in 2015 because in America we have more freedom, freedom to choose when we want to marry, <laughs> freedom to where we want to work and live, freedom for anything. So, um, before I found the library, I paid money to learn English. But when I found the Queen's Library Adult Learning Center in Flushing, I was very happy to find the free English conversation classes. The teachers are very prof uh, uh, pro professional, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, a very professional. And it is a very good environment because there are have many books about learning English. And, uh, and I can use the computer anytime. And I can choose from many different types of classes. So I took the ready for business class because I have a dream about uh, owning a coffee shop. Before, I thought it just was a dream, but now I have a plan. Yeah, I learned to how can I someone own a coffee shop in New York? And I learned how to solve customers' complaints, how to get the license, marketing, and I prepared business plan. Cool, so cool, I think so, thank you. And uh, Chris Library also helped my mother. Hi, my mother. <laughs> yes. When she first got here, you know, she could not go to the supermarket. Wow. Why? Because they only spoke English. Come on. She was too skilled. And so she only went to the Chinese supermarket. <laughs> she relied on me, everything. For example, go to supermarket, park, travel, everything. <laughs> so I'm no girlfriend. Oh, boyfriend, sorry. <laughs> Before, right now I got it, okay? <laughs> okay, oh, okay, come back. <laughs> now, she is changed also. She found a job and can take a bus, subway by herself. can ask some basic question in English. Woo. So, she, but I know she still needs more classes and more help. So, we we hope the library can continue to support her, my mother, and all immigrants because my mother matters. 
And uh, finally, <laughs> if I hold my uh, open mic cafe, yeah. I plan on having the live show, the live per performance. So I hope to help people who always work, work, work. I want to give the community people another peace and free time to relax, real relax. And I also to help support artists to music or painting and uh, performance. And do you know what I name my coffee shop? Guess, guess, guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> yeah. I hope you, 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 and you can become my customer. And uh, <laughs> in the future, OK? And your freedom waiting for you. Thank you. Rarely will you hear me say, I told you so. But did I, <laughs> did I call that one or not? I mean, uh, and I just met Ivy, and I just had a sense that we would not have a shy presentation here. Thank you, Thank you very much. And I think all of us will remember when she opens up her coffee shop what the name will be. And that name will be Freedom. And, you know, it's really important to reinforce this point because what you heard so far are people who are here for one reason. And that's to be part of the greatest country in the world. And to find a way to fly in, to come in, and make sure they're part of the dream. And I say that because what's been taking place is the demonizing of individuals, the demonizing of religious groups, of countries, of individuals of those countries. And I know when I look every day of people walking through our doors, the various countries, over 190 countries uh, that are represented here in Queens that speak over 160 languages, and half of the 2.3 million residents who were born outside of the United States, these are the individuals who we're here to serve. And these are the individuals that we have to constantly make sure that they get the information they need, but also they get the respect, respect that they deserve as well. Now to help us, we have individuals who are here to give some of the technical experience and knowledge as far as what's going on. And that means the information that will be given out around the tables and the people will be here for a period of time. And first we will have Kunchuk Doma, who is the director of the We Are the New York program in the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs. Welcome, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kunchuk Dolma, as Denise said, and I'm a proud immigrant New Yorker, a refugee who came to this country with no passport, a letter from the American Embassy that said I could travel, and a large chest x-ray. I sort of remember it being this large <laughs> that sort of depicted my relatively good health that allowed me to enter this country. And today, I'm proudly representing the New York City Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, an office that works tirelessly for the benefit or the welfare of immigrant communities through policies and programs that serve, that rely on the principle of inclusion and a celebration of diversity, that is New York. Um, we, the Queens Public Library has been a long-standing partner in this work whether it is programs like IDNYC, this country's largest municipal ID program, or We Are New York, the program that I run, the city's supplemental ESOL program. We have partnered with Queens Public Library and its amazing community libraries all over Queens to provide that services to immigrant New Yorkers seamlessly. Uh, in fact, we have an IDNYC enrollment center here, right here at Jamaica. So if there's anyone here who does not have the IDNYC and wants to take advantage uh, you can get them right here today in the morning after all the presentations and the forums are done. Um, this administration and our office, um, the leader, uh, under the leadership of Commissioner Nisha Agarwal, know and understand the value of libraries as centers of knowledge, as centers of access, as centers of community. Um, as we introduce other programs like Action NYC, which is the city's first legal initiatives program offering free legal health, help to all immigrant New Yorkers and New York citizenship, we will continue to work with the library to honor the promise that is New York, 
a place where immigrant families like mine, like yours, like all of us can come and make a home and thrive. Thank you. When I think of Queens Library, I think of my mother, who is a Haitian immigrant, um, a widow. And when she came to this country, the fact that when it was time to take literacy courses and when it was time to learn how to use a computer, she went to the Queens Library system, specifically Rosedale and Laurelton Library. And that's how she learned how to really um, engage herself, how to get involved in community, how to navigate technology. So thank you, Queens Library, for always being a hub of resources. And when we start talking about resources, I think about the New York City Commission on Human Rights, of which I'm the Queens director, and the fact that we are here to protect all New Yorkers. Here at the Commission on Human Rights, what we do is we combat discriminatory practices. We are um, an agency that protects your civil rights. So if in your employment, you feel that you are being discriminated against, if in your housing, you feel that you are being discriminated against, or if in any public accommodation, a restaurant, a park, a movie theater, you feel you're being discriminated against, I want you to come to the New York City Commission on Human Rights. You know, I have um, one of my colleagues, his name is Chris, he oftentimes says that, you know what, here at the Commission we're beneficial, but people don't always see our relevance. I think that in this uh, climate that we're in right now, where there's so much harsh rhetoric, where we've seen that bias incidences have risen, where we've seen hate crimes have risen, the New York City Commission on Human Rights is more relevant than ever. And we want everyone to know that no matter what your immigration status may be, no matter what your nation of origin may be, no matter what your religion may be, we here at the Commission on Human Rights are here to protect you. So if you want, we are here. We have many resources. The beauty of it is we have community service centers in each borough, so individuals don't have to travel too far. Here in Queens, it's right on 153rd and Jamaica Avenue. So if you know anyone who's had any such issues where they've been discriminated against, where someone is treating them differently, has um, verbally abused them, or whatever the case may be, please help Please help us to help them by having them contact us. Also, we just launched a bias response team. And what we do is in areas where there are bias incidences, we have our staff go out and we speak to the individuals and we move forward um, with the case. And because we have attorneys on staff, we do represent people in civil court and in civil cases. And we have done so much great work under our commissioner, Carmelin Malalas. We've really just expanded upon what the commission has done. When she first came in, we spoke a few languages at the commission. And language access is very important to her. Now, about two years into um, her, her position as the commissioner, we now have 28 languages spoken at the New York City Commission on Human Rights. It's important that when people come to us, no matter where you're from, you know that we can relate to you and we understand you and we meet you right where you are. So thank you once again to um, President uh, Dennis Walcott. Thank you to Queens Library. Thank you to you all. The New York City Commission on Human Rights is here for everyone. We are always New York. I came up from Brooklyn this morning. It's an honor to be in my neighbor borough of Queens. Uh, the New York Civil Liberties Union is the New York State affiliate of the American Civil Liberties Union. We were founded in 1951. We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan advocacy organization. We receive no government funding, which makes us very independent. We have 80,000 members across the state, hopefully a few hundred more after today. We have offices in New York City, in Albany, and in chapters across the state. The New York Civil Liberties Union fights to protect the principles and the values embodied in the Bill of Rights, the U.S. Constitution, and the New York State Constitution for all New Yorkers. Those include freedom of speech, 